Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and, uh, and Ranking Member. I want to just follow up uh, a little bit on what we talked about before. You, Mr. Wright, you and I have some things in common. I think you know I spent my, my business career in insurance, a business I love very much and I think can do an awful lot of good for people. And I, I noticed in my business life that as things got bigger, you have to manage them differently. Mm -hmm. And so when I had a small company, it was one thing. When I had you know, thousands of people, it was very different. And, you, and often, often when you're trying to understand how things are going wrong, mm -hmm. uh, you only see the ripples at the top where the causation is really beneath the waterline. And it's not easy to get to the bottom of things sometimes. I'm trying to understand something you talked about a bit earlier. The Write Your Owns had zero incentive to underpay claims. In fact, you might argue they had an incentive to pay them quickly because they don't make more money by uh, creating a torturous process. And yet, claims uh, got delayed and there were some pretty egregious errors made. Some of them appar apparently intentionally. You testified that the engineers and the adjusters would have no financial incentive to change a report, to say something was covered by flood and then a few weeks later send it to the insured with a denial and say it wasn't covered. Are you aware of any action within either the NFIP or FEMA more broadly, any action either explicit or implicit, implied, are you aware of anything that came out of NFIP or FEMA, either verbally or in writing, mm -hmm. that would have suggested to various write-your-own companies, various engineers and adjusters, that you wanted them to reduce claim payments? Sir, as, as you well know and we discussed, it precedes me, but I've gone back and I've had the team looking at this question, and I have seen no evidence of that instruction being provided. Does it strike you as just incongruous that this could have happened this way without somebody directing it? So the, the best I've been able to understand as we've looked through this, 19,000 of these claims came back for reconsideration as we've moved through. Uh, and as you addressed, I was brought in to finish fixing this given the problems that were in place. A few things have been made clear to me, and I've spent a number of time with some of the files myself looking at them, including some of the ones with errors in them. What I saw was a system that was overwhelmed without the right controls in place. I saw a lot of sloppiness. That's inexcusable, and we have to have the controls in place to be able to see that and correct it. When you have a size event as large as this one, um, you're not gonna play perfect ball, um, but we have to make sure that we do that. And so some of the changes I made, um, we changed the appeals process because when people didn't think they got a fair shake on it, they couldn't win through that appeals process, that's changed. The litigation oversight, we, the companies were fighting the wrong battles on this. But more fundamentally, I've got to get to the point by which we're not seeing changes made that are, uh, except to in improve the quality well, of the report. That's what I will be looking for. And I, look, I don't doubt your motives and your, your good intentions about fixing it, but we have to see something different in the actual uh, structure of and if I pee the next time, actually, I've only got a minute left, and I want to change gears okay. uh, for a moment. Uh, ICC uh, coverage we've talked about a little bit today. And I just want to ask you, it, assuming actuarial adequacy, mm -hmm. do you believe that increasing ICC limits and increasing the actual payment of ICC funds would, uh, would result in uh, avoidance of future losses? It would help mitigate future losses. For me, the key is finding out how to do it where, you know, today it's 30,000. Um, structures in your uh, district uh, largely are well in excess of a half million. I know it's a, a diverse place, but there's high property values. There's other parts of the country where the property values are only $100,000. We've got to find the right way to tie that coverage or mini grant program to the structure in a way that understands it, and then come to an understanding, are we trying, today we run a mini grant program that's helped to defray the cost of that increased cost of compliance. Are we trying to actually stand up something that provides you full coverage? 
at which point we should price it mm -hmm. and we should mirror some things that go in other uh, um, parallel lines. Uh, that's what I've been grappling with. It's it's uh, not simple, and we've got to do something that works in various geographic contexts. I, I appreciate it. My time has expired, and I thank the chairman for his indulgence today. The gentleman yields uh, 